Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to talk about chimerism. Chimerism. That sounds right, right? Anyway, I'm going to talk about... <laughs> and what it might mean for genetic genealogy and your family tree. I'm sorry I can't get the word straight. I'm just going to say up front that I have had very little sleep so I'm feeling quite loopy and suddenly the word chimerism. Chimerism, that's how you say it, right? It doesn't feel like a real word right now, like... <sighs> it seemed like a real word the other day when I was doing the research for this video, but after very little sleep, the word chimerism just doesn't even feel real. But I'm gonna push ahead with this video anyway, because I am a trooper, I am a queen, and I am trying to get a video out every single week. So I'm gonna do this. If I'm saying that word strangely, <laughs> I'm sorry. Before I get started, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell because it will update you of all of my future videos and it really helps out my channel when you do, so thank you. Okay, so firstly, what is chimerism? It is a genetic condition that most people just don't know that they have. Like, well, most people don't have it, but even people who have it don't necessarily know that they have it. It's a term used in genetics to describe a single organism that has two distinct genotypes. So basically that just means that one organism that has two complete DNA sets in their body. So it could be that you have one entire DNA set found in like one region of the body or in one organ or whatever, and a completely different set of DNA in a different organ. So your blood might have one and your saliva might have another. So depending on where you take the DNA test, it could have an entirely different result. So how does this happen? Um, there's a couple of ways it can happen, but um, one of the ways is naturally, like a lot of the time it's a twin where one twin has absorbed another in the womb. So they're carrying sort of the DNA of two people and that could be um, identical or fraternal twins. So one of the most well-known examples of this one is the case of Lydia Fairchild. So she was a woman who was, she had two children and she was pregnant with her third um, when she separated from her husband. Um, as part of the agreement, uh, what do you call it, like when they're separating, they um, had to prove biological connection to the children. And the DNA was established that the children's father was their father, but their mother wasn't their mother. So even though she had been, uh, she conceived naturally, she had carried the children to full term and she had given birth, um, she was not coming up as the children's mother. Um, this made no sense, but she almost lost custody of her two children because of this. Um, when she was giving birth to her third child, she was court ordered to have a witness there to watch her actually giving birth and then to take a DNA sample of the child and her immediately. And they did that and this sample came back that once again it wasn't her child, which seemed crazy. Um, but a geneticist figured this out. They decided to take some cells from, they were cervical cells, and her cervical cells matched the child. So what it turned out was that cells in her, the different parts of her body, like her blood and her saliva, when they take in DNA tests, um, were one geno like genome, and her ovaries and reproductive organs were a different genome. So what they were was her sort of absorbed twin. So biologically, she was her children's aunt. I know, that's the craziest thing you've ever heard, right? <laughs> it can also apparently happen naturally just after a pregnancy, whether or not the pregnancy was carried to full term, when some of the fetus cells, the fetal cells, fetal? Anyway, the cells <laughs> um, from the baby get mixed in with the mother's so they can move into the mother's body. All right, so another totally different case. Chimerism can happen from a medical procedure, so particularly a um, transplantation, transplantation, transplant. Oh my God, my brain is not working today. Um, just work with me here. Uh, so one example of this is a guy called Chris Long, 
and he was an American who received a bone marrow transplant. Um, but down the track when he had DNA testing, there was both his DNA and also the DNA of his German donor in him. Now, being that it was a bone marrow transplant, they did expect his blood would be um, like the donor's, but actually other organs in his body started to also take on the donor's DNA. So the DNA that was found in his blood, in his cheeks, and even in his semen was not his own, it was his donor's. In fact, like as time went on, the only DNA that was originally his that was left in him was in his head hair and his chest hair. All of the other DNA in his body had become his donors. It's like he had almost ceased to exist and he had become like the donor. This wasn't physically obvious, like he didn't look any different, he still looked like himself. Um, it's just a really weird thing to think about that genetically he was basically his donor. Okay, so while these stories are really interesting, the reason that I kind of wanted to chat about it today was because I wondered how it would impact genetic genealogy and, you know, building family trees from that stuff. Because if a chimera is in your family tree, so whether, it, if it's known, if it's in a recent generation, like if, if a parent sort of tested now and, and the ch or the child tested and it didn't come up right, you'd recognize it straight away. You'd go, there's a problem, there must be something wrong here. But if it happened further back in your tree, like a few generations back, or if it sort of was at least past the records that you knew, it would start to become really unclear. Like when I match with somebody in Ancestry, for example, and I look at how many shared centimorgans and I look at our trees and I compare them and try and figure out how we're related, um, it just, it just makes me think that if there was somebody like that in the tree, um, we would share, we would share less Centimorgans even if we were more closely related. Does that make sense? Like, if, if a child, I feel like I'm, like if a child, if their biological parent was actually more genetically like their aunt or uncle, it would show up that you would share less centimorgans even if you were the parent-child relationship. Does that like so determine so just uh, so to determine if somebody really is a chimera, it requires further testing and usually testing of relatives and things like that too. Um, you would have a better chance of figuring it out, like I said, if the um, chimera was in a more recent generation, so you would be able to just know that, you know, that person shouldn't be coming up as an aunt or an uncle or whatever. Um, but yeah, if it was further back in the tree, I feel like you could really throw a spanner in the works trying to figure out connection. So yeah, a DNA match in Ancestry could come across as really small, but it actually might be a really much more close match, if you know what I mean. I don't know if anyone has actually come across this or suspected it in their family tree, but if so, please do let me know in the comments because I'm really interested to know how this could impact um, genetic genealogy research. So yeah, I'd love to discuss it. All right, I think that is about it for this video. Hopefully it's enough just to get you thinking about that topic. I'm really interested in it, but um, hopefully I didn't ramble too much because like I said, no sleep. Um, all right. Thank you so much for sticking with me through this video. Um, I hope that you enjoyed it and do chat with me in the comments. I'm very interested in your thoughts. Have a great day and happy researching and live your dreams. <laughs> I'll see you soon in my next video.